Recording in progress. Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's Rachel Chase, and welcome back for another installment of our Celebration of the Seasons series for the Atlantic Center for the Arts that I'm creating for you this year. And today is all about celebrating the fall equinox. And I have my autumn colors on for you today. <laughs> my little owl on my shirt. So the owl is all about wisdom, right? And this color just kind of makes me feel like fall is in the air. So today I'm going to be guiding you through a lovely process all, all about the emotional time that we might be having at this time of year, the emotions that might be coming up for you as you transition from summer to autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. In the Southern Hemisphere, they're moving into spring. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, we celebrate the autumn equinox at this time of year around September 21st, 22nd every year. And we're just going to tune in a little bit to um, what this time of year has for each of you and think about it in terms of the harvest. The harvest is the time of year when we really bring forth what we have grown, right? Where we get to re reap what we have sown. And of course, throughout the summer, we do that as well, but it's time for the next harvest time. And so we're going to be making some art that celebrates this time of self-reflection, this time of stoking the inner fires. And we're going to connect with the inner muse of inspiration to keep those fires of inspiration going. And we're going to be making what I call self-compassion collage cards. And so I'll tell you a little bit about the materials, the materials that you're going to need for this um, exercise today. And I'm very excited about this process because I love collaging and I have a lot of art supplies that I get to use for this process. So you're going to want some glue sticks, um, maybe even some colored tape. I have these fun tape colors. Tape can be really fun to play with art tape, crafty tape. You can get it at the craft store. And um, the cards, I mean, you can really, I've got these old, I ended up with these old Balinese postcards, actually, that are kind of neat. So it, they're actual postcards. You might even turn this into something and mail it to someone. That could be an idea. Um, I also cut up some uh, watercolor paper into card cards. Maybe you can think of this as a card that you're going to send to yourself or to someone else. Um, and you could collage the front of it and draw on the inside, or write a message. That's another thought. Or you could just think of it as it's just a freestanding piece of art that you're about to make. Something that is um, for maybe your art altar, uh, something to gaze upon, like a mandala. And for those of you who know my work, you know I love mandalas or mandalas, which are um, usually round or square, and they have a central fo focus and an image that radiates out from the center that um, is uh, indicative of a certain mood or an idea or an archetype. And so you might think of this as a mandala that you could create. Let's see. I think that's enough options. What do you think? <laughs> so some kind of a visualization tool, a postcard, a card here, just or just art, just a piece of art that you want to enjoy for yourself that expresses some message from within you. Now, what I'm most interested when it comes to this process is, is that this is about expressive arts, about something that is in you that is seeking to express itself, which is different from perhaps making a um, plein air painting or a landscape drawing or a realist um, painting or piece of art where you're uh, rendering an image that looks like something out there that you're looking at. This is more about communicating your inner self, your psyche, your emotions, 
your soul. So we need to kind of find out how to access that first, right? And we're going to do a little breathing today and a little connecting and centering in the heart space and moving the body just a little bit to clear the energy of maybe any heaviness or stress that might be around so that we can open the consciousness, <laughs> so you can open your mind and see what wants to be expressed in this moment. And, um, oh, other art supplies you're going to need, of course. Scissors, definitely a must for collaging. Maybe even some markers to decorate your collage with. And then, of course, magazines. Now, I've got a pretty good collection of magazines that I've collected over the years. Um, ask your friends if they have some. Um, you might even check out places like community centers or libraries or... Um, I know you can always buy some at the bookstore or something like that, but see if, if you know of anyone that's got some old magazines. And you know some something else that I have found that's really cool is, see all these cutouts here? Um, I got these on Etsy. So there's there's people that collect a lot of things and put them into packets and will sell them for pretty cheap. And you can look for a junk journal supplies. These are the type of things you can look for on the internet. If you're into collaging like I am, um, there are definitely a lot of really neat ways that you can come about getting materials for your collages. So um, stickers are kind of fun to use for collages too. I actually got some stickers. These are like on sale at some craft store um, and I just saw them in the sale rack and I thought, beautiful. So yes, let's see, what else? I think that's it. I think we've got a good amount. Oh, and a pen and something to write with because we will start the process after we do a little centering and breathing and de-stressing. We'll do a little journaling just to tap into your inner self and see what words want to come through as you connect with the themes that want to be looked at. And I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we're going to access those themes for your collage today in just a little bit. Oh, and I also have this matte board card that's thick stuff that you might just think about doing something a little bigger like that. Might be fun to explore. So make sure you get your art supplies and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So first what I'd like us to do is just take some breaths and I, I'm just going to do them sitting here in my chair. You can sit or stand. You could even lie down if you want for a little bit and just follow the sound of my voice. So I want you just to kind of gaze around your space for a moment and take in your surroundings. This is just a way to start to connect with your sensory experience. Just look around your space and take in what you see and then drop your gaze inside internally and you might want to place one hand on your heart center or your chest just to feel your heart beat and feel your breath moving up and down moving in and out And as you're doing this, I'd like you to listen to the sounds that you hear in your space and the sound of your breath. And begin to calm your mind by listening to the sounds Invite in any and all sound that you hear off in the distance or in the room that you're in or the home, your home. Maybe there are other people in the house. You can hear what they're doing. Maybe there's cars outside. You can hear those. Or maybe you live in a very quiet place and you can hear birds outside or Maybe there's the whir and the sound of the refrigerator motor or the air conditioner if you're living in the south or the sound of the air in the room. 
the sound of the breath, your own breath moving in and out. Take a big deep one and exhale out the mouth. And allow yourself to connect with your physical sense of being any and all sensations that you feel in your body. Continue listening and feeling for a couple of breaths. And see what arises inside of you. Be curious about what you notice about your thoughts, maybe your emotions, maybe you have some things going on in your life. And so you're thinking about those things or maybe memories or maybe the dream that you had last night or thoughts about tomorrow or just notice what you're thinking, notice what you're feeling about those thoughts and give yourself permission to feel whatever that is. It might be a good feeling, like a pleasant feeling, joy or excitement or love. Or it might be unpleasant feelings like frustration or confusion or doubt or worry. Give space to these emotions for a moment here. It's very important to give yourself permission to feel your emotions. And now what I'd like you to do is contemplate. Contemplate all the ways that you have grown so far this year. What have you learned about yourself? And you're going to go ahead and get out a piece of paper to write on and a pen or pa pencil. <laughs> and just for a moment, just write down maybe the emotions that just came through, the sensations you felt, the sounds that you heard. Just take a moment. I'm going to do this with you. We're going to do it together. <laughs> You know, sometimes there's no words for the emotions we feel. Sometimes it's just about muddling through with, with the words, describing the sensations as best as you can. Maybe, for example, like a pushing in the belly, a sense of pressure in the throat, or a feeling of a, like a wave-like motion in the chest, or something like that to describe the sensations that you feel because your sensations and your emotions are directly connected this is your inner self communicating with you your body communicating with you all of the wisdom that you need is inside of you. Truly, the messages of your body. So just take another moment to write. And 
and write about those ways that you've grown and the things that you've learned about yourself too. Insights perhaps that you've been having about yourself, about your life. And you can even write down a couple of things that are that really stand out as your strength and your gifts. The the parts of you that <clears throat> that you feel strong inside about. The things that you do well. Maybe the things you're learning are the things you do well. <laughs> you might see a little story start to take shape about your emotions and what you notice inside and these, these lessons these insights, these are the things that you're harvesting. This is the, this is the harvest right now. <laughs> and whatever else wants to be written, just let it go. Let it come through. Let it come out so that you can see it. What other messages does your heart have for you? Does your inner muse, your inspiration have for you? Okay. <laughs> if you need to write some more, by all means, pause the video and write as long as you need to. There is a wonderful book I recommend to everyone. It's called The Artist's Way. It comes with a workbook, too, by Julia Cameron. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Julia Cameron suggests that... And the tone of the book has to do with writing, but it... It's really for all artists, anyone that is creative or wants to be creative in any endeavor. She recommends that we do what she calls morning pages, where you sit in the morning and you just write like a stream of consciousness and let it flow. Just write and write and write. And the purpose of that is to clear the space of your mind so that you can face the day be more present because so often we just pop out of bed and go into our day without kind of processing the nighttime and processing the day before and getting the stuff out so it's just so helpful and useful I notice for me when I do it I just feel a light a lighter sense of being in my body it's very cathartic it helps to release suppressed suppressed suppression suppressed emotions there's an old saying you might have heard, Suppre suppression is depression, or depression is suppression. And so often we don't want to show our true feelings because we don't want people to worry about us, or um, we're afraid that if we start to go down this road of crying or releasing those hard feelings that 
um, we'll be stuck in that place and it'll, we just won't get any better. But what that can lead to is depression. If we don't get that energy out, then it gets stuck inside and we close up and it creates a pressure on our entire system, which makes us then n not able to, to do things, <laughs> to face the day. So with so much going on in the world right now, I know many people are struggling and I wanted to just plant a little seed to remind you to ah, clear and release and let your body move and ah, shake out any of that excess energy that needs to come out. If you feel like you're tight and you're closed up, then open up and let it out. Make a sound and shake your body and ah, release it out. As, as we move out of that excitable, fun energy of summer into the fall, sometimes it could feel like, well, now it's time to get down to business and we got to get serious and, you know, uh, back to school and get into our routine. And so I really want this experience to give you a therapeutic benefit of just some space for yourself, some space for your feelings, <sighs> and some space for your breath and some space to just kind of go into the zone with your collaging and let go of any real attachment to this picture that you're creating, having to be any specific particular way. Because if you do that, you, you're kind of locking yourself in and then you're just looking for one image. But I'm going to just ask you to let go for a little bit here and let your emotions guide the way. Let your intuition be at the forefront as you start to look through these magazines and see what stands out. See what feels like, yes, I need that picture right now. I want to use that image, that word, yes. And, you know, you might cut out a bunch of things and then only use maybe three or four of the images that you cut. Or you, maybe you'll use all of them and you'll say, oh, I need something bigger to put it on. Um, so roll with it with me. And I'm going to just bring us into this process here. And we're going to do this together, just like with the journaling. So let's take a few breaths. Let's do this. Sit up. Big breath in and blow. Out the mouth. I'm going to do that again. Big breath in. And then this time just open your jaw and let it all out. Big breath. Open. And one more big breath. <sighs> and then place both hands over that heart center, the chest area. And maybe you feel your feet down beneath you. Connect your feet on the ground. Move your legs a little bit so you can feel grounded. And imagine that you have an inner guidance system here in your heart called your intuition and that you also have a part of you that is your muse. Maybe this is something that you've always had a connection with. Maybe this is a new idea for you. Your muse is that, that part of you that's nudging you into inspiration, always nudging you into inspiration connecting you with insight, connecting you with ideas for creating, for writing, or for painting, or for collaging, or for that next thing that you're stepping into, or that project that you want to finish, or just inspiration for your relationships and your connection with yourself. And then the third thing I want you to do is to think about this word compassion and think about all of the ways that you could use some more compassion for yourself. Maybe, maybe you've been hard on yourself about some things or a little bit self-critical. Maybe the, the critical voice is 
about a certain part of your life or a certain thing that you're doing. And then I want you to imagine what would compassion say? How can you invite in a more kindness to yourself, more understanding? And let your consciousness, let your mind expand. Take a deep breath. And invite in a bigger picture because compassion usually has a pretty wide perspective on things. And criticism is usually very narrow and, and focused in on one little thing. But compassion helps us see the bigger picture. And so I want you to stay in this awareness of this bigger picture of compassion as if you, with your own eyes, I want you to open your eyes and it's almost like your gaze just widens out. And that's the field of seeing through the eyes of compassion where we can take it all in and accept things just as they are, even if we don't always like them. But it helps us engage with the moment in a, a more inviting and curious way, which brings forward new insights and solutions to make things better, or at least be able to be more clear and move through things with more softness and feel better inside. <laughs> And with this gaze, we're going to start going through the magazines and just flipping through and seeing, seeing what you see. <laughs> First thing I see makes me laugh. <laughs> so yeah, just connecting with the imagery and just start to cut, start to cut out some pictures that speak to you, some words that feel connected. And you may not even know how you're going to put it on the page later or how the decoration is going to go, but right now it doesn't matter. Right now you're just cutting things out that make sense to you in the moment. And then we're going to sort it all out later. You might have so much cut that you'll make s multiple cards, multiple collages. Maybe you have some journals you want to decorate. You can collage the front of some journals. It's always fun. Maybe at this point you want to put on a little music while you're doing this. Something fun and reflective of your mood right now. Yeah. Just keep cutting. See where it takes you. great thing about doing it intuitively is that means that after you make your collage you'll start to see messages and the imagery will speak to you it's almost like while you're making it it may not make as much sense as after it's done 
at which point it'll start to make some sense and maybe surprise you. <laughs> maybe the imagery will be refreshing to your nervous system. <laughs> Maybe it'll even have some messages for you, some guidance that you need. Well, this part of the process can take a little while, so I'm actually going to pause the recording while I finish cutting all my pieces. Of course, no time will pass at all for you. And then we'll go into the next part and make the collage itself. So I'll see you in a blink of an eye. Recording in progress. How's it going? Ah, <sighs> make sure you take little breaks as needed. I'm still at it, cutting away, but I feel that I'm getting closer. So maybe you've got to pause this and take your time getting all the images together. I probably just have a few more to cut, so we'll see. I have no idea how this is all going to go together, but we'll see when we get there. <laughs> Maybe you've already got some ideas. 
for your design. It's like mining for gold. You don't know, but then when you get there, it's shiny and it says, "Yes, this is this is this is speaking to me." <laughs> Scavenger hunt maybe. Just a couple more images here. I probably already have enough. <laughs> but I feel like something else wants to happen, too. Uh, let's see. Some fun, fun stuff. It's amazing. All the imagery. Yeah. Hmm. I love art. Don't you? <laughs> I'd hate to think of a world without art. Self-expression. so important for us to see our inner self expressed outwardly. I knew something else wanted to happen. These are nice. There we go. All right. And then, of course, when you get to start gluing things down, you might say, oh, you know, I'd like to put a shape in here. I wonder what shape I could add in here. Or you might want to add a word or I've got some printouts of some old famous pieces. So fun. So let's go ahead and start seeing about putting this into some kind of composition. Some kind of collage. Let it come to life. Keep your magazines and such nearby so that when you get to the next place and you feel like you want to add something else, you can always grab it. Yeah, I have more than enough. <laughs> Maybe you do too. Made a nice big mess. It's always fun to make a big art mess. Some thoughts were coming through as I was making mine. I wonder about you. Maybe some thoughts were coming through. Some themes. Themes that you connected with. Themes that you're connecting with in your self-reflection of the ways that you've grown and learned. and <sighs> Those themes of inner reflection, the resources that you're harvesting, the strengths that you have, the desires, and maybe just other things came through that you're not quite sure how it relates, but later on will make sense. 
Let's see. Guess I'm gonna put it on here. Maybe I'll do like a outside and inside. Hmm. We'll see. I'm only saying that because I have so much stuff cut out. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. So if you've never done a collage before, you want to hold off on gluing until you start to arrange things a little bit into a background and maybe my background might have a couple different things going on. Once you get it kind of sort of loosely worked out, then you can start gluing things down because you might have some layers. And you might start working with something and think, oh, let me change that. And once you start gluing, it's kind of hard to change it. So you want to really work it out before you glue. Sometimes the scissors, scissors get lost in the mix. <laughs> Got to search them out. Cut things to size. I'm feeling like this is probably going to be a very, very simple image, this one here. Probably won't use everything I cut. But maybe I'll make two. Or we'll do that inside out thing. It's kind of fun. This makes me think of something you can do maybe with a friend. Um, and you can look up the history of mail art. Where you make a start a piece of, of art. Maybe it's a collage like this. And you mail it to someone. And then maybe they add to it or deconstruct it and make a new piece of artwork out of it and send it back. Mail art. Pretty cool. It's a neat way to communicate. And then you also have the, you know, the envelope that you're sending it in and the postage and that can all be turned into part of the art too. So I'm just going to start gluing some things down here. There's a background and some layers. <laughs> it's funny, you might cut something and then flip it over and realize you actually want to use the back <laughs> once you get there. That's that's life, right? Sometimes you, you, you think it's going to go one way, and then you get there and you find out, whoops, guess it's not. And we have to let go of expectations. <laughs> I think that's kind of part of self-compassion, too is having compassion when we have expectations and we feel disappointed but then realize we have to adjust our perspective <laughs> and find a new way to see things which is why I love art so much it helps us see things in a new way <laughs> let's see yeah, helps us see our own inner strengths, maybe that we forgot we had. I think that's part of compassion work is realizing a lot of times we 
we don't see ourselves in the in the best light we can be hard on ourselves you know hold ourselves to a little bit too high of a standard doesn't mean we don't want to do our best but sometimes we can really be hard on ourselves when it's unnecessary you know <laughs> yeah got to go easy on ourselves a little more go a little easier Let's see, I had something else around here. Where did it go? Well, maybe it's not making the cut this time. <laughs> we can just keep it a little simpler. Although I really liked that. Not sure where I put it. We'll see. Yeah. Well... That looks pretty interesting. This is communicating something that I had in my thoughts as I was going into this in a sort of kind of way. <laughs> and um, yeah, this has to do with intuition, something to do with letting the inner inner self guide the way. So I think I'll probably keep going and do another one too. But this is um, this is my self-compassion collage for today. I'm going to decorate the edges, probably put some tape on it, maybe put a couple of words around it. I did have this one, but it's a little big. Tame your inner critic. Can you see that? It's a little too bright. But see, it's it's too big for this. Where would I put it? So that didn't make it. But this this is speaking to me. Yeah. So this is mine for now. <laughs> Would love to see yours. You're always welcome to share with me whatever it is that you're creating. You can um, reach out at Rachel at rachelchase.com. Send me an email. And I wish you all the best. A wonderful autumn equinox shifting of the seasons. Go easy on yourself. Remember to tap in and tune in with your inner guidance. Your heart always knows the way. Thank you so much to Atlantic Center for the Arts. I am so proud to be an arts and wellness ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. If you haven't ever been there, you should go. <laughs> I'm biased, of course. It's an absolutely beautiful, wonderful location, and they have incredible programs. So um, I wish you all the best. Peace, and I'll see you for the next one in the series for uh, winter solstice. So have a wonderful, beautiful season, and I will see you then. Ciao for now.